I was scrolling through the comments recently and so many of you were asking for Filmora tutorials, so here we are. Now, I know a lot of us, including me, have been using CapCut, but let's be honest, after the recent updates, it's become way more expensive, most of the good features are locked behind the Pro version, and this is where Filmora becomes the perfect solution. In fact, today, we're going to try making the same edit in both Filmora and CapCut, so you can see the difference yourself. So before we start, here's the preview of what we'll be cooking in this tutorial. Open Filmora and import all your clips. Split them according to the beats. Here are my project settings. You can copy them. Now, let's add slow motion to a few clips. Go to speed and adjust it based on your needs. I'm keeping mine at 0.60. Split the extra parts of the clip and repeat the same process for any other clips where you want slow motion. In CapCut, you can apply slow motion the same way as we did in Filmora. Now, Let's add Twixter to the clips. Twixter makes your footage smoother and more polished. Pick the clip where you want to apply it, go to speed ramping, click customize and adjust the graph like mine. First, delete the two extra points, then shape the graph as follows. 1.4 at the start and 1.4 at the end. 0.4 in the middle, Save it as a custom preset so you can reuse it on other clips. Trim any extra parts as needed. Then apply this Twixter graph to all the clips. Finally, click here to render the preview and watch it without lag. Now, in CapCut, for adding Twixter, there's also a Curve option. But unlike Filmora, you can't fully customize the graph the same way. And after creating your graph, you can't save it as a custom preset. So, you'll need to make same graph for every clip, which can get a bit frustrating. So, at this point, Filmora definitely has the advantage. Now let's add a smooth zoom animation. Click on Crop. Then select Pan and Zoom. You'll see two sections, Start and End, which let you create either a Zoom In or Zoom Out effect. Here, we'll make a Zoom In, so adjust the End section. Choose the Video Ratio. Mine is 3 to 4. Then preview the Zoom and adjust the Position and Scale until it looks the way you want. Once satisfied, click Apply. Repeat this process to add the zoom-in effect to all your clips. Now, let's try adding the same zooms in CapCut. Unlike Filmora, CapCut doesn't have a built-in pan and zoom feature. Instead, you'll need to manually add keyframes under Transform to create the zoom effect yourself. So here again, Filmora scores another point. Now, let's create a cutout transition. Go to the beat where you want it. Then duplicate the clip by holding Alt and dragging it above just like I did. At the beginning of that clip, freeze the frame by pressing Alt plus F and drag the frozen frame onto the beat. Mm -hmm. 
Next, open AI Tools and scroll down to find the Smart Cutout feature. Select the part you want to cut out. I'm choosing the football here. Then click Save. Repeat the same steps for the second clip. To add a flash effect on the cutout, duplicate the clip again. Go to Color, Curves, and shape the curve like mine. Then in Basics, reduce the exposure and brightness. Now go to Video, Opacity, Add a keyframe at the start, then at the end, set opacity to zero. Right click the clip, choose show keyframe animation and the graph will appear. Select both points and adjust the graph as shown. Do the same for the other clip. You can also place this cutout transition on another beat if you want. In CapCut, the process of creating a cutout transition is mostly the same. However, CapCut PC doesn't let you make a fully custom cutout. You can only remove the entire character, not a specific part you want. If you still need to isolate a certain part, you'll have to use a mask, like I did. So when it comes to background removal or making precise custom cutouts, Filmora has the better feature. Now, let's add a shake effect. Go to Effects and search for Basic Blur. Drag it onto the clip where you want the shake. Split the effect at the halfway point of the clip's duration. Add a keyframe at the start with blur set to 25. Then go to the end of the effect and set blur back to zero. Next, search for longitudinal blur. And drag it onto the clip. Add a keyframe for blur at the start and set it to 30. Move forward three frames, then set blur to zero. Split the effect. Now search for extreme effect and drag it onto the clip. Split the effect at the end of the clip. At the beginning, add keyframes for frequency, position X, and position Y, then set the values as shown. Enable motion blur. Move to the halfway point of the longitudinal blur and adjust the values
Then go to the end and do the same. Step back three frames and adjust the values again. Next, go to Media. Add an adjustment layer and split it at the end. Search for White Flash 1 in Effects and apply it to the adjustment layer. Add a keyframe for frequency at the start and set it to 100. Move forward slightly and set the value to 65. Then change the blending mode to overlay and set opacity to 15. Go to Stock Media, find a white overlay, and drag it onto the clip. At the end of the longitudinal blur, split the overlay and fit it into the composition. Add a keyframe for opacity at the start, then at the end, set opacity to zero. Change the blending mode to overlay. Duplicate this overlay. Make it half in length. And again, reduce the opacity to zero at the end. Your shake effect is complete. Select all these effects. Copy them. And paste them onto the other beats. In CapCut, you'll find plenty of built-in animation presets to create a shake effect, which makes the process quick and easy. The drawback is that these presets don't give you as much freedom to customize the animation compared to Filmora. On the other hand, CapCut also offers a wide variety of shake effects, almost as many as Filmora, and the steps to apply them are very similar. So, let's try it out. And there you go. The shake effect is applied successfully. Finally, let's add a panning effect at the starting clips. Search for extreme in effects. Drag it to the clips. Then adjust the values in the settings as shown. Now, let's add the same panning effect in CapCut. Go to Effects, search for Play Pendulum, then drag it onto your clip. Make the adjustments as shown, and that's it. The effect is applied. Now, preview the final result and export your edit. So, tell me in the comments, which one do you think is better, CapCut or Filmora? That's it for today's video. Don't forget to check out Filmora from the link in the description, and as always, thanks for watching.